Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 2nd of June, 2014, and this is episode 81. So, grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. My birthday was last week. It was a pretty good birthday overall. On Monday, we went out to, to lunch and we went to Noodles and Company, which I love, but my family is like, nah, about. And we got lunch, and I thought it was fantastic, and neither of my kids ate, but whatever. They never do when we go there. I don't know why. They like noodly foods. They just don't like noodles and company. Because they're weirdos. They can't help it. They come by genetically. My whole family, all weirdos. Anyway. We went and Steve ate all of his food and then he ate a few bites of each of the kids' food and then he went back in to get something else and I was like, really? You're really that hungry? Silliness. But what he, what they brought out when they brought out the food was a piece of cake. Well, it was actually two pieces of cake and they brought four forks and they were like a fudgy chocolate cake with chocolate ganache on top. Oh, it was so good. And there were four strawberries that were sliced and um, Gabriel said they looked like sharks. So each of the kids had a strawberry and some cake and I had two strawberries and most of the cake. It was amazing. Um, and we went out for dinner on my birthday so that I didn't have to cook. We went to La Rosa's, which is basically a pizza place, but I got a salad because that's what I really, really wanted for my birthday for dinner. It was good. It was a good birthday. Charity Knit Along is going on. I finished the hat that I was working on last week. So it's hasn't been washed anyway, so I will try it on for you. It's not like my hair can look any more awkward today. So see, it's got these little like pointy things going on on this hat. I like it. I think it's cute and I would wear it. So I hope whoever gets it will wear it too. I used Lion Brand Wool Ease in Blueberry Twist for most of it and then down here you can see there's a, a shift. That is, um, the Blueberry Twist is sport weight and the Denim Twist, which is these rows down here, um, that is worsted weight. And I had, so I used up all of the blueberry twists in that hat, and I had a little bit of the denim twist left. So I made this little hat as well. They're both crocheted, I believe, on hook size um, I, which is 9. I think that's a 5.5 millimeter hook. I don't remember. I didn't write it down. But two more hats finished for the charity knit along, which goes on for two weeks from yesterday. The 15th. Yeah, two weeks from yesterday, which by the time you see this will be less than two weeks. Um, anything you make that will be donated and is a Ravelry sanctioned craft counts, or anything you make using a pattern, yarn, or fiber that the proceeds of that go toward charity, those count. The prize will be... Um, a $7 pattern of your choice, or I will make you something from my stash. And I received two more blanket squares this week, so I'm going to show these off. They are from Robin. Lovely pink textured squares. I'm going to show you both sides because I always get confused when I'm trying to show you things if I'm showing you the right or wrong side until I'm, you know, unless I'm focused on the screen. I'm... Let's, let's calm down for a minute. So, I'm recording later than I've been recording recently, which is still not late. It's only a quarter after 11 in the morning, but I've been recording around nine. I did a whole bunch of errands, so I feel like my whole schedule's thrown off and now I'm rushing. I had to do a lot of things this morning though. And that's also why I look like this because I rolled out of bed. I did a little bit of knitting and then I was like, okay, post office opens at nine. Let's get out the door by 845. And then we went to the park and to the library, so. And it's hot outside. So this, that's what's happening because it's hot outside. Anyway, 
finished objects. I have two. I'm super proud. So I finished everything on my May to-do list except for my ZK thigh highs, which when I make my to-do list of crafts that I want to get done for the month, I always have like one project that's the stretch goal and the ZK thigh highs were that last month. So they're not finished, but they will be finished by mark a day on the ZK, even if I have to stay up all night every night that I'm there beforehand, which that would be ridiculous. That's not going to happen. They should be finished by the time I'm ready to get on my plane, but we'll see. Anyway, no, I have three. Oh, I forgot about one, but first this. So this is the Merino that I was spinning last week. It is gorgeous. It's perchance to knit that odd color in the sky before the storm. Superwash Merino wool, 4.1 ounces, and I got uh, probably 510-ish yards. Oh. Yeah, babe. Why is the berry pie not ready? Because it takes an hour to cook. Oh, can I come knit with you? No, I'm recording my podcast. Can I call your podcast too? <laughs> uh, you can say hi. Hi! Okay, now go so I can finish recording. Oh, there's me. There is you. You're silly. Go! Okay. I am. I think this game is going to be super difficult to give back to Josh in a couple weeks. Well, Mom, I think that's you. That is me. Go, please. I love you. Go downstairs. I don't think there was anything else I was going to say. So hopefully that was all the things that were floating in my mind. But it's very, very pretty. Um, it There are two distinct grays, light gray and then this darker gray. And the green sometimes plied with itself, like right there. And sometimes it barber pulled in. So it's very subtle. Because it was pencil roving, I didn't try to split it or anything. So I just spun the whole thing straight and then plied halves together. And this is what I got. I think that Josh is going to be very pleased with it. And it is my favorite one so far. It's going to be difficult to give it back. I also finished the Vlad Shawl by Tammy Bailey. I made it out of Mountain Colors Barefoot which has mohair in it, in the colorway Harmony Moss. It's so gorgeous. I have, oh, I think this is about three yards left over. I ended up doing the eight body repeats instead of seven, and I did not do the last four rows. I probably could have done one more row, but it Instead of binding off on the purl side, I would have been binding off on the knit side, so it's not like there would have been any additional patterning going on had I done that extra row. The This is what it looks like. You want to see it? It's finished and blocked. If you look at the project page, these pointy bits, these leaves, are pointier on that shawl. And that is because the last two rows of the shawl make it pointier. There's There are two eyelet rows that make this point even pointier. But I think that the overall effect is still really good without the pointy points. And I use all but, you know, three yards or something. So I think my option worked out well for me. If you wanted pointier points, and you only had 400 yards, um, work as to the pattern. I think this is beautiful. I wish that I could wear mohair, but I can't. I can work with it, but even just, um, I just had it draped across my arm to show you, and now my arm's getting itchy. It's not bad. I'm not going to break out. It's not like cashmere, but it does make me itchy, so I wouldn't be able to wear it, which is so sad, because look at that color. <sighs> it's so pretty. My third finished object is a bag. I took part in a swap that was, um, it was called a scavenger hunt swap. It was really fun. And the idea behind it was instead of going out and buying a lot of things for your swap partner, to instead 
go through things around your house and um, kind of de-stash a little bit. So I haven't received my package yet, so you'll see that probably next week because the mail-out day was Saturday. and I just mailed mine out this morning because I'm a horrible swapper. All of a sudden it was the last week of May and I just couldn't get my act up together enough to get everything that I needed finished by Saturday. So instead it went out this morning. It'll still get there by the end of the week, but I feel kind of, kind of really bad about it. However, there are other people who were mailing internationally, so their packages will get there after mine gets to my recipient. I still feel, feel really bad though, because I should have had it out on Saturday, right? Anyway, I made a bag as part of my package because I have a really big fiber stash sewing fiber, not spinning fiber. I have a, I have a um, modest spinning fiber collection. But my sewing fiber, I have a lot because I used to sew bags in college. Um, not for a lot of profit, but I sewed them for my friends and they would buy the materials and then, you know, it, it was enough to, um, to keep me in chocolate all year, which is really all I wanted it for. So I have this fiber stash that I hardly ever use. When was the last time you saw me sew anything? I don't even remember the last time I sewed something and showed it on the podcast. So um, I, clearly this is, I have to keep saying the word this week, even worse than normal. I made a bag. My swap partner said that she liked bags that have two sections to hold sock yarn and the bag should zip have grommets. I have grommets but I've never actually used them and I didn't think that I should use them for the first time on a bag that I was sending to someone else so I opted not to put grommets in but I did leave the um I left openings by the zipper sort of so that yarn could come out through those openings. Hopefully my partner likes it, and um, I'm really nervous because it's been a long time since I've sewn anything. I like it. I would have kept it. I would use it. I might make myself a bag. I'm not holding myself to that, though, because then I would have to make myself a bag. And um, my sewing machine isn't working, so I sewed that by hand. I need to get my sewing machine into a sewing machine doctor to get it fixed. But right now, that's not really... It's not really practical because I don't really want to sew. Although now that I made that bag, I kind of really want to sew. But I haven't felt like sewing for a long time. Even before my sewing machine started acting up, I didn't really want to sew. It was more I was sewing because I felt like I should, not because I wanted to. But now I want that bag. So there might be some more sewing this summer. We will see. Works in progress. Well, I'm working on one right now because I felt like I was going to be talking and not doing anything with my hands and uh, that would get me even more distracted than normal. So let me finish these last three stitches and then I will show you. I'm working on a magic cake shawl. I'm making a second one because while magic balls are really cool, excellent application for leftover yarns, not everybody has that much leftover and I want it to be something that people can make just because. So let me show you. And let me, So this is where I am. And I said it again. I have finished the first repeat. That's as far as I've gotten because I started it yesterday and I'm planning to do one repeat a day. I have slightly less yardage here than I had when I made my original magic ball shawl. I really want this to be done by um, the ZK-ish, so I'll probably add more repeats in later, but right now I'm just doing one repeat a day and unless I really feel like working on it more. The yarn I'm using is Art Yarn Ultra Merino. Two different skeins. There are no color names, 
on the labels. One is color 140 and I think the other one was 150 something. I don't know, I threw it away because I only needed one label. They don't have color names. You can't really see, but when I wound it, it, they come in 50 gram balls. Did I say that already? Who cares? I'm saying it again. I wound the first 50 grams, which is a bluish color, and then I tied a slip knot to tie them together in the middle, and I wound the second skein. Two 50 gram balls wound together so that I can stripe them, because I think that is a really... I think that will also be a really practical application in this type of shawl, because you can go anywhere and pick up a 50 gram skein of sock yarn and then you have 50 grams sitting in your stash. Or maybe you knit a pair of socks and you only use 60 grams. Well, you still have 40 grams sitting around. That is a pretty big leftover. And if you have two of them, you can make a decent sized scarf shawlette thing. So that's why I'm making it. Um, I think it'll be good. I think the colors will work well together. They don't have the same colors. So it, you can see the outside has like camo colors. There's khaki, a brownish, a greenish, like brown khaki and green khaki. Both of those colors, um, tan khaki, I would call it, and then a black gray color. The, the other color was light blue and brown. I have a picture. I'm going to show you. The browns are not the same, but they are similar. I think it will be, I, th I think this will be a good application. And if it's horrendous, then I'll rip it out. I started a another project yesterday because it was the first and that is cast on day for me. But I didn't cast on that much. Only three things. I started a pair of socks. These are going to be my design socks, which will be coming out soon. My first test knitter has finished and um, she didn't find any mistakes in the pattern, which is good. Hopefully nobody else finds any mistakes in the pattern. I have two other test knitters that I'm waiting to hear back from, um, but my deadline is still two weeks out, so no rush on their part. Anyway, this sock, um, I'm making the larger size. My pink ones were the smaller size, so these are going to be the larger size. I figure that would be good for photo purposes. I'm using Regia Hand Dye Effect in the colorway Marine. It's 25% nylon, 70% wool, and 5% acrylic. I'm a little worried using this yarn because I have read reviews on Ravelry that um, it doesn't make the best socks. but Actually, the, the reviews have been very split. Either people absolutely love the sock yarn or they absolutely hate it. So far, I haven't, um, I haven't made a decision. I think it's going to be one of those things that I will know after they're finished being knit and I wash them. I also started another spinning project. This is the last of the four fibers from Josh that I am spinning. So that's what it looks like. It is Jacob Wool from Two Sisters Stringworks. It's 100 ton brands. Um, I'm kind of, I think I'm going to fractal this because it has all these colors that are super pretty, the, the browns and greens and kind of a gold. So I might fractal it. I might just split all of it into small slivers and spin it up because for some reason balls that are like this size spin up way faster than balls that are two ounces like over this I'm not explaining that very well I feel like it goes faster because I finish a ball and I'm like oh I finished a ball normally when I finish you know my my regimented what I need to finish a day when I'm spinning, I'm like, okay, that's enough. But when it's these small balls, I'm like, maybe I should just attach the next one. I'll just get it started. And then all of a sudden there's two done in a day. I don't know why it's more fun and more interesting, but it is. This, um, I want to have this finished in two weeks. That's insane. 
by the 17th I would like to have it spun and plied but if I have to take the singles I, I definitely need the singles to be finished by then if I have to take the singles to ply that won't be a big deal but I'm hoping two weeks Ugh. which is why I didn't cast on a whole bunch of things I only cast it on I only cast on three things because two of them I want finished by the ZK and the third I would also like finished around that time so I can release the pattern with a picture so sock yarn blanket because it is on my lap and it is hot. I finished nine squares this week and of course I don't have it all ready to show you like I sometimes do because that would make my life easy and I'm sitting on it again. <sighs> Most of these are yarn from Haley. So these are Haley yarns, more Haley yarns. Even more yarn from Haley. And then this yarn is from Haley. I love this yarn. This looks like the Miss Babs that I made the leg warmers out of, only it has less white or neutral. I remember. I'm not going to look for the square right now, but I am going to compare them now because I can't remember. But it's very similar. I think it has less white in it. I don't know what it is, but it's very pretty. And then this is from Allison, and it is Sack Bunny Studios. Oh, happy day. 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% Stellina. It's super pretty. I just realized that I went out of order. I totally forgot to talk about my ZK thigh highs. It's because they're all the way on my right, and I usually go left to right on my desk to tell you about things. So the next thing were Hexapuff and Sock Yarn Blanket by order of left to right. So I totally skipped these. I'm gonna go back to them and then I'll get to the Hexapuffs. So here they are. This is where I was last week. So quite a bit of progress. This is a marker of day progress, but this is my week marker. So from here to here, knit last week. I just switched from US size one to US size two needles because I got through my calf and instead of, well, through the bottom part of the leg and now I'm going over the calf muscle. So instead of doing increases, because that'll make more stitches, I just went up a needle size. We'll have to add more stitches um, in a few more inches, but right now I just went up a needle size. So this is the pattern on the back. There is a, a faux argyle pattern on the front, which you can kind of see, but I wanted the front to be very subtle and then the back to be in your face. So I think that worked. I think that worked well. This yarn is from 716 Knit. It's 716 Sock. If the apocalypse comes, beep me. It is the Retreat colorway from last year. So it's going to be awesome. I'm wearing those to market day. Anyway, I, so I did nine squares, which brings my total up to 610. And I did nine hexapuffs, which brings my total up to 165. This yarn is um, Purple Spice Premier Serenity Sock. That light is totally washing that out. And that that was from Haley. It's from the what she sent me for the um, temperature thigh highs. Words, they're good and also tricky today, apparently. So these hex buffs are all from Haley. I have a celebratory one, which is a little bit smaller, but it'll be fine when it's in the blanket, I'm sure. Uh, this yarn is eye-searingly bright. That brightness that you're getting, oh, that's pretty. Yeah, it's that eye-searing. It's pretty, but I made a blanket square, and then I started working on the hex puff, and I was like, how did Haley make a pair of socks out of this? Because, blah! So Haley hex puffs. More Haley hex puffs. Celebratory hex puff. And... And Allison Hexpuff.
Yay, Hexapuff, sand sack yarn blanket. I, when I wrote my show notes last night, I was like, did I get any new things? And I looked around and I said, no, I didn't get any new things. And then I sat down to record and I was like, what am I talking about? I got a ton of new things last week. The Ravelry. I received many patterns for my birthday, so that was exciting. Last week I didn't have my tablet, so I couldn't show you the pattern that I received, which was Parting It Up and Getting Down by Megan Williams. So, there you go. Trying to maximize visibility and minimize glare. Fiona, who does the a Down Under Yard podcast and Solar Flare Fibers, gifted me the Div Divergent Socks by Carissa Browning, which are super cool. I'm excited to make those soon. Not yet. Not this month, because I have a lot going on this month, but soon those are happening. I was talking about these last week. They're the Short Row Shuffle Socks by Kirsten Hall, and Audrey gifted me those. Yay! Josh and I, and other people, were in um, a VKN on my birthday, and he said, is there any pattern from your pattern store, from my pattern store that you would like? And I said, uh, reticulation. He's like, that's what I thought you were going to say, but I thought I would check. It was not even a question. I love this shawl. I already have the yarn figured out for it. I just need a little more time so I can work on it. But that's coming up super soon because I love this shawl. It's reticulation by Josh Ricks. Lisa from Knit Two Together gifted me two patterns. That was really exciting. This is Jedi Mind Tricks by Cookie A. And the other pattern is her pattern, which has language in the title. So I'm going to have some, uh, some language going on here for a second. These are the Out for a Walk Bitch socks that she designed. She has a new group which is Sparkle Punk on Ravelry. So check it out. And if you've gotten an invitation to that group, that's what it is. It's Lisa Tomko's new um, design thing. And she changed her name to Sparkle Punk as well because she's designing socks like a crazy person. But I also received Urban Survival, which is Josh Rick's Josh Rix's Mystery Knit Along that's happening right after the ZK. I could have read about it to be sure, but um, I'm going to say that I think that it starts at the ZK on the Saturday and then releases patterns every following Saturday, but I could be making that up. I didn't read my intro letter like I should have before I started talking about it making things up. Check it out. It's a really cool pattern. I have seen it. I haven't knit it, but I've seen what it's going to be because um, we bounce ideas off of each other. So Josh, Lisa, and I. That happens. What I am reading. I don't have things to show you because we went to the library, so I took back everything that I read last week. It was time. Today was the day that everything was due back. And since I had to go to the post office, I was like, well, we may as well hit the library while we're out because I do not like making multiple trips out if I can make them all at once. So that's what we did. I finished reading The Black Swan by Mercedes Lackey. It was very good. I liked it a lot. Was it the best fantasy book I've ever read? No. But it was good. Definitely worth reading. I would even consider picking it up to own. Then I read Beige by Cecil Castellucci. It was okay. I really think that 15-year-old me would have liked it not 
I think 15 year old me would have appreciated it more than 28 year old me appreciated it because the main character was kind of whiny and I was like, seriously? Get over it. But it was okay. I could not relate to the main character because the main character goes to live with her dad who is a in a punk band that's kind of big, like kind of a big deal. Um, she lived with her mom in Canada. She goes to LA, I think LA, somewhere in California. All California is the same to me because I've never been there. That's horrible, right? I know that California is a really big state and has a ton of different things. It's all, I've, I've never been west of well, Minnesota officially, because I went to the ZK, but practically, I've never been west of Kentucky. So, um, geography totally escapes me, and I'm really sorry, everybody who lives in California, that your state is just one big everything, all the same. I know it's not. I've read books set in multiple places in California, and the settings are way different, but it just doesn't sink in for me. It's horrible. So horrible. Anyway, she, she stays with her dad for the summer, and he is in a punk band, and she does not like music. What kind of person doesn't like music? I don't. This girl and I, we could not have been friends at any point. Ever. I love music. Music was a huge thing for me in um, high school and college. Less now because my children dictate what we listen to a lot. But once they're bigger, I'm sure it will be a huge part of my life again. Let me take a moment to say my sister bought tickets for us to go see Lincoln Park in August, at the very end of August, and I am super excited. The last concert I went to was at the same venue a decade ago. I haven't been to a concert in ever, in a decade. It wasn't quite a decade. Was it a decade? I can't remember. Yeah, it was a decade ago. I haven't been to a concert in a decade. And I'm going to see Linkin Park, 30 Seconds to Mars, and AFI at the end of August. I'm so excited. I'm way excited. Back to knitting podcast with books right now. So I just couldn't, I read it in a day because it was really short, but I could not sympathize with the main character. After that, I read True by Hilary Duff. I know, I told you that I was I was on the fence about reading the book, but it was the third book in the trilogy. I had already read the first two. I enjoyed the story much more than the first book. I really think the first book is not very good, and the second and third books get better. So there's that, if you're interested in reading anything by Hilary Duff. It wasn't bad. So last night, I started... Heart's Blood by Juliette Marillier. She's one of my favorite authors, and I could totally be butchering her last name, but I don't care. Been butchering it for over a decade. I'm going to keep butchering it. Almost 15 years. Holy cow. Sometimes I feel so old. I haven't even really started reading this, though. I got to page five last night, and Steve, I started it right before bed. And Steve was watching something about Russian yetis. I just could not focus because I was starting a book. And starting a book is much more difficult than picking up a book that you've already been reading. Do you see how this hair just does not want to cooperate? Anyway, barely started it. I'm sure it will be great because I read pretty much everything that she published before this. I think there might be one young adult book that she published before this that I haven't read yet, but I'll be checking it out from the library soon because I didn't know it existed. I'm excited for it. I have no idea what it's about because I don't read covers, but I'll tell you next week. My list this week, three podcasts to check out. 
The Hungriest Knitter with Rachel. She talks about knitting and um, she talks about food. She makes really yummy sounding things. I do not have that passion for food. I do have that passion for eating, but not for making food. I like to cook when I like to cook, but that is like once a week. I cook more frequently than that, but I only like to cook like once a week. So I try to do as much prep and everything then as I can. The second one is Two Tangled Skeins with Sue, Carrie, and unofficially Lynn, but kind of officially. She is frequently off to the side. They're in Canada and they went on a hiatus for a little while, but now it seems like they're back into their weekly recording schedule. Rachel records um, every other week, I think. I don't know, I watched all the episodes on Saturday because there were eight, so I just watched all of them. And I think it was every other week that she recorded, but that could be incorrect. Dark Matter Knits definitely records every other week. Um, Dark Matter Knits is with Elizabeth, and instead of kind of an update of everything that's going on, um, she picks a theme based on what's going on and then expounds on that theme. She also talks about what she's what she has going on, but that's it's not like my podcast where I'm like, these are my segments and this is how everything works. Hers is more free form very enjoyable. She seems very knowledgeable. She's going on vacation, so her posting is going to be a little more sporadic over the summer, but it's summertime and that's what happens a lot. A lot of people go on to a more sporadic recording schedule, except teachers. Teachers seem to get more regular during the summer, which I appreciate because that fills in the gap of the podcasts that I watch that are going a little, a little uh, less scheduled. Yay balance. Anyway, that's what I have for you this week. I hope you made something fantastic with your sixth and string, and I will see you next week. Bye!